Hello everyone, this is Sherry, and this is Blue, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Hi everyone! Hope you're doing okay. Hope you had a great weekend. Did you get some sewing done? Well, I did. I finished up my string beans blocks and now I have them in piles of rows so that was a trick <laughs> when I laid them down all on the floor to try to distribute all of these crazy colors that are in here well they're not too crazy <laughs> but this dark stripe kind of tripped me up although it needed to be in the blocks it was hard to get that distributed evenly throughout, but probably no one notices that but me. <laughs> Once it's done and all put together and bound and is a complete quilt, I doubt anyone will really notice that. Only I will. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll show you a picture right here of the black and white, you know, monochrome photo that I take to try to distribute all the all the um, density of the lights and the darks distribute all of that throughout the quilt evenly it really does help me I don't know if it helps you but it really does help me to see what's sticking out and what's going to look odd when it's done if I don't move it to another spot so so we're just going to sit here and put our pieces together I'm at my Baby Lock Jazz 2, my new sewing machine, which I haven't done a video on yet. I'm still trying to get familiar with it. And also, I have um, three presser feet that didn't come with it. I was told that it came with it, but when I got the box, the box was completely sealed. It had never been opened. And the instruction manual didn't indicate that these feet would be in it, so... I had to order those and and I just kind of want to get a full feel for for what it can do with all the different things that I want it to do before I try to show you what it can do so I will tell you this is very fast and you need to keep your foot off the the pedal down there while you're doing anything under here or you will get a needle through your through your finger <laughs> So that's kind of a bad habit that I have of keeping my foot on that pedal all the time. And it's just because you don't want to lose where your pedal is. So you kind of just lightly keep your foot on it. But this machine right here, no, you can't, you cannot do that. It is just super sensitive and and fast listen to this how fast it'll go thought i was going to make it to the end done this great big long seam i did in probably five seconds if i hadn't stopped I should have used pins, huh? Keep it together. I had to stop and readjust. No, no pins. I'm not doing pins. So I'm trying to keep on my mind that I need to join the right hand sides so that I don't get royally screwed up here and have to rip things out. Here I am again, talking while sewing. We'll see how, see what a terrible thing that turns out to be. I'm determined. Sometimes I think when I'm multitasking I do better than when I'm concentrating so we'll see we'll see how it comes out but yeah I'm putting the whole top together today while I'm talking to you I don't know if I'll get done by the time I get through with this video but I'm gonna keep doing this while we're talking I also want to express my sincere thanks to all of you for subscribing to the channel and watching the videos 
Uh, the channel is doing well. It's moving along at a pace that uh, I'm happy with. Um, everyone has been so nice. All of you are so, so nice. You know, there's always one or two troublemakers here and there, but um, I just boot them out. But anyway, um, so many of you are, are so good to comment and give such nice encouragement to me. And I'm for that. That's, that's kind of my thing, too. I don't want to bring anybody down or, you know, fuss at people or anything like that. I, I, hopefully I can do and say things that... Uh, help people have a better day than than maybe what they started out with or what they could have so I just really appreciate all of you for that so so nice and so many of you gave me nice suggestions on um, you know what center to, or if to put a center in the the batik boho quilt and so many of you commented on that I would say the vast majority wants some sort of center in there, a yellow center, orange center. I had some other very different, unique ideas, like uh, one person said to put the yellow center, but put the quilting in it that I was talking about, the swirly quilting. And I might do that. And then someone else suggested doing like a double center like an uh, orange uh, yellow center with an orange smaller center I might audition that up and see what that might look like I'll be having episode three this week I promise on that I haven't touched it so the next time I touch it will be when you're watching the video I will have touched it <laughs> I'm going to uh, Press those interfacing flowers, the interfacing side down on the base, and and start um, appliquing those on. Yeah, I'm going to give you a couple options on that, and you guys might come up with some other options as well as to how to how you want to sew them down. I tell you what, I was pretty accurate on this cutting because these are going together really good. One more on this first row. I have five rows of six blocks. I might get it done while I'm talking to you. Who knows? This one's about to be done already. Now, um, I was telling you the other day how that on this string beans quilt, there's a an inner border and then there's a piano key border. And I am not going to do the piano key border. I'm just not interested in, in all those little pieces. Right now, I've got so many other things I want to concentrate on. And if I had a little more time, I'd probably do it. But I'll show you what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to use this yellow here. It's a kind of a plaid yellow. It has a little dark yellow plaid stripe and then a white stripe. And it's, um, it's, it's directional. It's... You know, it's crosshatch. So I'm going to open this up. I'm pretty sure it's going to be long enough so that I can get full strips all the way around. So I'm going to do a border of this first. And then after that, I'm going to do another border with these. And I don't know that I'll make them this wide up and down. You know, let's say this is the top of the quilt and this is sitting on top of the yellow inner border, okay? So I don't know if I'm going to do it more like this or if I'm going to, you know, fussy cut out which stripe I want to, so that they all join right. Because I've got, you know, I've got the three different colors. 
and I don't just have these I have some more of this fabric not a ton and I know I can't make it all the way around with this if I did them side by side so I'm going to put something in between either it's going to be that more of that yellow um, plaid thing I just showed you or or something else I got other you know those bright greens I've got some of those still so this will be the the outer border and then the the binding I haven't decided the binding I might do the yellow for the binding or I might do something dark for the binding I probably ought to do this dark green could to kind of tie it all together I don't have any more of this but I could certainly get something that's you know it I'll find something to match it you could probably find a match on that pretty easy so that's what I'm going to do on string beans just amazing how we got to the end of the month already what to, today's the 28th yeah 28 so yeah I just decided this past weekend that I would just get my string bean blocks done I had to do five of them so that was the bulk of my sewing this this weekend I'm trying to think if I sewed anything else I don't think I did. I think that's that's all I did. Of course, I spent uh, several hours with So Yeah on Saturday night. They have their D stash on Saturday nights, and you can get uh, you can get five yard cuts for thirty dollars which is good for backing. You still have to piece it, you know, usually, even with five yards, because the width is 44 or whatever. And then you can get 108 inch backing by 108 inch, which is three yards of 108 inch quilt backing for 55, I think it is. And let's see, what else did they do? They did some, they did some bundles. They did some fat quarter bundles. They didn't do any yardage. I don't think they did any. I don't think they do yardage on Saturdays. It's a D stash. So they're, and you know, you tend to kind of see some of the same old things that they're having a hard time getting rid of. So I was kind of jumping back and forth between other videos and them. But I watched the majority of it. And of course, I bought some stuff. I got some, I got a cave facet bundle I got a what else did I get I got a charm pack and I can't think of the other fabric that goes with the charm pack Carolina Lily I think it was very pretty it was like <laughs> like this orange and green and yellows and and uh, the bundle I got to go with that charm pack though I think it's got some blues in it too and then what else did I get? Oh, I got a I got a set of rulers for cutting uh, half square triangles. I'll have to show you how to use that once I figure out how to use it. And then uh, what else did I get? That was actually in my package on Saturday. That wasn't what I got last night. But I did get some bundles last night and I did get some five yard cuts. So I'm building up gradually. I've got plenty of fabric, but you know, I don't have things that go together. I've just got stuff that, you know, I can put in with other things, but I don't know. I just, I just need some things to work with. And I've spent a lot of money with them lately. So hopefully we'll have lots of projects to do here coming around here's my first row yay or wait there's one more one two let me make sure it's supposed to be six one two three four five I lied I have one more one more then I'll have the first row done What else was I going to tell you? 
I wish she was here so you could, you know, chat back at me. We'd just have a big old time, wouldn't we? That'd be fun. I'm planning on going to um, Paducah, to the quilt show down there. Are you all familiar with the Paducah, Kentucky annual quilt show? It's like the biggest one in the world or something. And that's only like, I want to say between three and four hours from my house. I'm not sure. So we were thinking about taking our camper down there and finding a place to camp. And then I could go to the, to the show or convention or whatever it's called. And, um, it's April 27th through the weekend, whatever that date is. I think that's the dates. So I've always wanted to go. And now that I'm taking my quilting a little more seriously, I think I should go. So if any of you are going, let me know in the comments if you're going. I don't, I don't know, maybe I'll put a sign on myself. So y'all can find me. Oh, you know what I look like though, don't you? <laughs> okay, here's my first row. If you see me, just come over and just just punch me in the arm and say, Hey, Sherry, I watch your channel. <laughs> you're going to see a lot of people's, people there that your channels you watch. There we go. There it is. Pretty, pretty. Now I got to remember that that's number one. I should be marking them, shouldn't I? I'm such a rebel. I'm just gonna hang them over this chair here. And then when I go to sew them together, I'll have to get a new routine in my head of how I'm gonna keep that together. Right now I've got these piles, these rows laying this way and this way, this way and this way. So anyway, that first one was the top row. So right sides together on the right side. See, I'm doing okay. Some of you, I don't know about some of you, but a couple of you asked if you could get the pattern to the K facet quilt that I got back from the long armor the other day. And I went to look for the pattern and I did find the pattern. And let me sew this up real quick and I'll show you. Get this straight, and I can just take off with it. Zoom, zoom. Okay, lay that there. I did get this from the Fat Quarter Shop. Here's a little sticker that was on the backing fabric. It's probably backwards. I don't know how to turn that around. It's called the Light K Facet Collective Mystery Quilt. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the date on it. So I went on to the Fat Quarter Shop online to try to see if it was still out there somewhere. And I didn't see it, not even in their like free patterns or the old block of the month. They had some older block of the month stuff from other blocks of the month, but not from this. So what happens is, is you sign up on there um, when, when a block of the month comes out, if you're on their mailing list, they'll send a email indicating that a block a month is going to be starting in two or three months and you do a reservation. So you end up paying like $4.99 to reserve it because they're only going to have so much fabric. And if you're on the list for the block of the month, then, then you'll be sure to get all your fabric by the time you get done with your quilt, your backing, your individual blocks, everything you need to bind it. You won't get, uh, you will get backing too if you reserve it and you, but you won't get batting. That's, that's on you to get that. But they, they'll send you a card each month. You'll get a package in the mail and you'll get a little card 
and this is card number one and it says on here the skill level is beginner featuring K facet classics the technique is piecing designed by K facet and Liza Lucy the brand is free spirit fabrics and the crafting time is a weekend so whatever's in that package you should be able to do in a weekend a weekend is subjective isn't it if you have a whole weekend I'm sure you can get it done if you got kids and you're running around and you're doing errands and you work full time during the week maybe not so much you might have to work a little bit during the week on it too but you're only gonna get one a month so you know you can spread it out the finished block size was seven and a half by seven and a half and then it said additional requirements is quilting thread a rotary color cutter mat and ruler and basic sewing and pressing supplies well and then it had the little pieces of the puzzle here that's actually the fabric design that came in it that particular month and then on the back you have your cutting instructions and your sewing instructions and some illustrations and this particular one for number one says that it would make eight blocks yeah and it was that that one with the flower and then the little um, corners or something else so there's the two fabrics and then that's what it makes so I have ten of these and then here's the last one the last one is uh, it's a set of blocks as well seven and a half by seven and a half blocks and then you'll also it'll also give you the final layout of it and you can see I marked mine up pretty good trying to make sure I didn't mess anything up but there's my finished quilt there and then on the back there's finishing instructions I'm sorry if this is backwards um, yeah that's the binding and the backing it's telling you how what size and how much to do of all of that so you know I don't know if you seriously want a copy of this send me your address in the email lessons learned 2021 and I'll make some copies of it I'm probably not supposed to do that but it's not on their site anymore and there's nothing on here that says you can't reproduce this nothing so let me know but be serious about it because that's going to be that's going to be a pain in the butt to copy all this and send it out by by snail mail i would say i could would scan it all and give you a pdf or something but i don't my, my printer is not reliable my printer scanner i don't even know if it scans so if you really 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 want it i'll do it for you but uh, send me your, your name and your address in the Lessons Learned 2021 email, okay? And give me, give me a little bit to get it done, okay? There you go. So let's put some more of these string beans together. I got so many nice comments on that cave quilt, and I love it. I love it. I don't even know what to do with it. Not sure what happened, but my recording just automatically stopped. I'm not sure what that was about, but... Hopefully you got what I last said. Okay, so here we go with another string bean going together. If you all watch Pat Sloan, she has a she has a uh, a YouTube channel as well. I'm sure you know that by now. But uh, I watch her every day. And the other day she was trying to put her string beans together too I mean she had she's been putting her rows together as she goes but as far as the the sashing not sashing borders and all that she is doing that piano key thing she's doing it exactly according to the directions but 
you know, I, I'm just putting my own spin on it. Something else I discovered on Fat Quarter Shop today when I was looking for that cake block of the month thing is they have free uh, downloadable patterns on there of like classic blocks. It's really nice. It's not like you have to go find one of your old, you know, basic block quilt books and and thumb through it until you find it you can just go if you go through if you go and just search under uh free patterns it'll give you a whole whole bunch of free patterns and it just you just hit the button that says free downloadable pattern and it just pops up in a pdf so you can print it off right there doesn't cost a thing nothing so um I've got some, a fabric line called Save the Bees, and I got that from So Yeah. And I kind of wanted to do something like a bear claw with that. I think that would be cute, wouldn't it? Because bears like honey. And do a bear claw block configuration with that. So that's an idea that I have. So I could just go get my pattern right off there. I'm sure I've got a bear claw pattern in a book somewhere here. But uh, I can just go get it off there. Modern technology's taking care of us. Plus, we don't have to keep a lot of books around, you know. I love books. But in recent years, I've just... I've just gotten rid of all my books. You know, they're, they're dust collectors, and they're bad for your allergies, which I don't have too much problem with allergies, but my husband kind of does. So, I've just got a handful of books now. And a lot of books, you know, like craft books and stuff, they kind of go out. You know, that like the way of doing things goes by the wayside. You know, when rotary cutters and mats and all the rulers that you can get came out, it seemed like, you know, you could just whip up a quilt in, in a fraction of the time, although it does take a while still. But think about the old days, you know, the 1700s or whatever. They worked for probably weeks and months on quilts. And I'm not talking about UFOs either. I'm talking about <laughs> constantly working on a quilt until you get it done because, well, first of all, they had to hand stitch it and then they hand quilted it. But imagine them, you know, with their cutting, you know, they're cutting these individual little, little squares out. Who knows how, what they're using to do it with. Piece of wood or they didn't even have cardboard, did they? <laughs> At least we can save the cardboard out of our charm packs and um, layer cakes and all that stuff to make patterns out of. Like I did with the Batik Boho, you know, I made that petal pattern, that template out of the cardboard from that layer cake. And that was because it was curved, you know. <laughs> Can't do that with the... But even still, you know, I used my rotary cutter to cut it. I didn't have to hand, you know, draw it on there and hand cut, necessarily. Well, we're moving right along here. I heard somebody say the other day, on a channel. I don't know if it was Coriander Quilts, who is Cory Yoder. I just found her YouTube channel. It's kind of new. Um, but, you know, Cory Yoder, she's a quilt designer or fabric designer. Maybe both. Pattern designer. I don't know if it was her. But I finally got a definitive answer on if you've got pre-cuts that have that pinked edge where should you sew? Well, they said sew and sew with the inner, the inner V to the edge of the other fabric. Like if you've got just a straight cut piece and then you've got your pinked, 
you know, how do you put those together? Do you use the top edge or the inside point? And you use the inside point is what they said. And I, like I say, I don't remember who said it, but it was somebody that I would trust. I just had one of those. That's what made me think of it. Let's see. I've got one more. I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's get this one on. And I'll have two rows done. Then I'll only have one, two, three rows left. Yay! And then I'll do some pressing. And then I'll put the five rows together. Let's get this done so that we can say that we did two rows together. Who knows? Maybe you are working on your string beans after all. With me today. At this moment. That'd be cool. I had somebody send me their photo. Let me get it. Okay, there's our second row. I have to say, when I laid this down on the floor, it looked mighty good. I was I was pleased with how all these colors went together. Okay. There's that. Let me go get my iPad and I'll talk to you about that, that photo. Oh, here's the... I want to show you this while I got it up. It's the uh, bear paw. Bear paw. I was saying bear claw. And... So anyway, if you go on their site, I hope you can see this. I always see it on a, on a fat quarter shop. And see that? That's just like if you were going to buy something in a shop. But then you just hit where it says download free PDF. And there it is. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use this feature of their site so that I can get those basic blocks, the patterns for them. Cool. Okay, so what was I gonna show you the picture that I got from a viewer? Let me see. Kelly Rushing. She said, I did two sets of each block. This is Darlene's. Darlene Michaud's quilt along that we did together, the scrappy one. I did two sets of each block and added some scrappy two and a half inch strips. I made for my niece who has nonverbal autism. She loves the feel of a crumbly quilt and bright colors. So here's the picture of that. Gorgeous. It's got butterflies. Looks like applique. I don't know if she did applique on it or not, but it sure looks like it. The feature blocks. There's um, flowers and butterflies. Uh, yeah. Flowers and butterflies. Looks like she did applique. I'm not sure. But she's got a scrappy border on there. And then she also put a decorative stitch on her binding. And looks like she's done a meandering quilting on there so great job and I hope your um, niece really enjoys that I'm sure she will I would it looks cozy cozy and colorful so thanks Kelly for sharing that continue to send your photos in people whatever you're working on I'll be glad to share it with our viewers Okay, so I think that's all I have for today. Look for uh, two more videos this week besides the Finish It Friday. Um, one on the sewing machine, and once I get my feet today, I'll, I'll be able to show you some things with it. And then also the uh, Batik Boho Episode 3. 
So got lots of good things for you to watch this week. So stay tuned. Have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.